Here's another pumping problem. And again, we're looking for the work required to pump all the water up and out over the edge of this tank. This one's shaped like an inverted cone, like one of those paper cups. And the point of the cone is at the bottom. The largest radius at the very top of the tank is 4 meters. The whole tank is 10 meters tall. It's a pretty big tank. And the water rises to 2 meters below the top edge, so 8 meters deep of water. I've got a note here to the side, just a reminder that we're using metric units, so the weight of water is 9800 newtons per cubic meter. And again, that value will be given to you anytime you need it. We're going to approach this the same way we did the last one. The last one had that cylindrical tank, and that made life easy because the slices all had the same radius. In this case, when we take a slice, we still have a circular cross-section, but of course the radius is changing, so the problem will be a little bit more complicated. But as long as we're careful and we apply some of the things that we learned with areas and volumes, this won't be too hard to work with. We're going to approach it the same way. We've picked out a slice. We're going to find the force or the weight of that one slice, which will be the 9800 times the volume. The 9800 is the unit weight of water. And if we find the volume in cubic meters, that will cancel and we'll be left with newtons of force. So it's really a matter of finding the volume of a given slice. This radius here Last time the radius was just a constant 12, but now this radius is changing. If you think about this, as you take different slices, if you take a slice at the bottom of the tank, for instance, that radius would be zero because there's just a point. If you take a slice at the very top of the tank, there isn't any water there, but if you did, the radius would be four, four meters. And then anywhere in between, it will be somewhere between zero and four. But notice carefully that the radius is changing linearly. It's a straight line from the bottom to the top. And so that radius is going to change as a linear function. So we know that R is going to equal mx plus b. We just don't know what m and b will be. We've done something like this before. And I'm going to show you, again, two ways to find this relationship between x and r. One way is more the algebraic approach. The other is more the geometric or visual approach. So when it comes to finding R, we can do it using some algebra, or we can do it using some geometry. And either way, you get the same answer. So I'll show you both of these. But of course, in a given problem, you only need to be able to do one of them. You don't need to know how to do both and you can choose whichever you prefer, whichever you find easier, stick with that one. For the algebraic approach, we can take advantage of what I already said, that we know the radius at two points. We know the radius is zero at the bottom of the tank. We know the radius is four at the very top of the tank, which gives us a hint as to where we want to place our origin and measure x from there. Either we're going to select the bottom or the top of the tank. In this case, selecting the top of the water would not be as helpful because we don't really know anything about that point other than it's two meters below the top of the tank. We don't have information about the radius there that would be useful to us in our approach here. So we could still select the top of the water, but it wouldn't be convenient. It wouldn't be the easiest thing to do. So it's easier if we select either the top or the bottom of the tank as our origin. I'm going to select the bottom, and I'll show you why in a second. Either way will work, but I'll select x starting at the bottom and measuring up from there. So when we take a slice, that slice will be at some location x, where x could be somewhere between 0 and 8, where the top of the water is. OK. The reason I'm doing that is that now we know the radius at two values of x. If x equals 0, we're at the bottom of the tank, and r also equals 0. At that point, the radius is 0. 
The other place we know is when x equals 10, at the top of the tank, the radius is 4. And now, finding this linear relationship between x and r is relatively simple because we already know the intercept b, because we know when x equals 0, r equals 0. So we know that the intercept b will just be 0. And then thinking of r as our y value, we can find the slope m by using the change in r divided by the change in x. So we know m equals change in r over the change in x. The difference between the two r values is 4. The difference in the two x values is 10. And of course we need to make sure to subtract in the same order. And so we get, if we simplify, 2 fifths. So r equals 2 fifths x. If that went too fast for you, you can go back and try it again. But we're thinking of r just like y, and we're finding the line that connects two points, x equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 10, y equals 4, but we're using r instead of y. This is why I selected the bottom of the tank, because it just makes life a little bit easier in that the intercept is 0. If I had selected the top of the tank, we would have this a little bit reversed. We would use the points 0, 4, and 10, 0. In other words, these R values would be flipped. And we could do the same process, but then B would not be 0. B would be 4, and the slope would be negative 2 fifths. So you can do that, and it works out the exact same way at the very end. This just saves a little bit of effort with a little bit of cleverness. So again, I don't want to harp too much on where you pick your origin. Either the top or bottom of the tank is usually the best option, but you are free to use any of them, and you, as long as you're careful, you'll always get the same answer. It just may be that one is slightly more convenient than another in very small ways. So that's the algebraic approach, and some of you may find that to be easiest, just to think about how to find this relationship between the radius and the position of the slice. The geometric approach uses similar triangles. We've talked about these before, but if you draw a side view of the cone, it'll look kind of like this, where I've drawn a center line for it. In other words, it looks like a triangle, and the radius here, at whatever value of x we choose, we can measure the radius. Now notice that now we have this triangle in red that's a part of a larger triangle. And that larger triangle has a height of 10 and a length or a width at the top of 4. So in other words, this r is similar to the 4, the x is similar to the 10, so you can write something like r over x equals 4 over 10 or some other arrangement of these similar sides. And then you can solve for r by doing this, multiplying x on both sides. And of course that again simplifies to 2 fifths x. Again, if you were to set up your x value starting at the top of the tank, you could still do this process, but now the length of this shorter side of a triangle, instead of just being x, would be 10 minus x because x would be this distance right here. I went through that kind of quickly, so you may need to go over it and try it yourself if you choose to do the similar triangles approach, but you can always go back and rewatch this video and go through it several times and make sure that you can follow that process. All you need to know how to do is either the algebraic approach or the geometric approach, whichever you prefer, as long as you can get this relationship between x and r. That's really the hardest part of this problem. Once you have that figured out, everything else is relatively simple and it's just a matter of carrying through the work and doing the integral carefully. So let's continue on. We now know the radius is 2 fifths times x. We know the thickness of this slice is delta x. So the volume will just be the area of that circular cross section. 
pi r squared times delta x. So that's 9800 times pi times 2 fifths x squared times delta x. So just to clean this up a little bit, I'll write 9800 times 4 over 25 times pi x squared delta x. So that's the force, that's the weight of one slice. And it looks kind of complicated, but all of this is just a constant. So the x squared is the only part we'll have to actually deal with in the integral, and that's relatively straightforward. So the force we're done with, and then the distance will be a little bit simpler. Coming back to the picture here, if we pick a slice at a position x, we need to think about how far this needs to be lifted. It won't be x because x would just move it back down to the bottom. We want to go up to 10. So if x is the distance down to the bottom and 10 is the total distance from the bottom to the top, the difference between those two will be how far we need to lift it. So the distance is just 10 minus x. In other words, if x is here, this distance is x. We know the total distance is 10, so we know this remainder here is 10 minus x, because these two add up to 10, the full height of the cone. Okay, so the distance is 10 minus x, and with that, we're ready to calculate the work using an integral. So the work will be force times distance. The interval looks kind of complicated, because we have all these constants carrying around But notice we're just taking that big expression for force, multiplying it by distance, 10 minus x, and then we move the delta x to the end, and it becomes dx when we integrate. The last thing we need is limits of integration. So again, we come back to our picture. Hopefully you notice how important it is to have a good picture to begin with, because we keep referring back to it and using it for different parts of this problem. The limits of x that we'll use for integration are the limits of where the water is because that's what we're trying to pump out. So we'll start when x equals zero at the bottom of the tank and we'll end here at the top of the water where x equals eight since it's two meters below the full height of 10. So we'll go from zero to eight. And we're really pretty much done. There's one step of integration that I won't spend a lot of time on because that's not really our focus and it's a really simple integration all you'll do is distribute the x squared here and then integrate using the power rule. So if we pull out all of these constants, we can integrate 10 x squared minus x cubed from zero to eight. I will leave that to you because it's not very interesting or very complicated, but it's a huge number. It ends up being 3.4 times 10 to the sixth approximately. So that would be moving the decimal point six places to the right, and that's in joules again. So the integration is not the focus of the problem. The focus is really the setup, because that's the hard part. But just like we did before, we divide it into slices and think about the force and distance for each slice. It's just that for the force, we had to take some care in finding that radius, and it was a little bit tricky. So there's a lot of small parts to this problem that are all part of this larger problem. So it's like we're solving four or five problems all in one, which is why these can feel a little bit overwhelming at the beginning. But just take it slow, go through systematically step by step, and follow this pattern, and you'll find that they're not too bad.